My name is Todd, and I will be your captain this evening. It is once again Fly Day. Welcome out to Jumbo Williams Raymond. And uh, we're just going to take uh, the old Tomahawk up today. I was thinking that one of my favorite little flights is to fly out over Jackson to go look at Hawkins Field, which is a towered airport in the middle of Jackson. I guess probably its oldest airport. And then um, fly over to Madison, where our uh, flight club is, where I had been flying out of for quite some time before I bought an airplane. And then come back over here, see what kind of time we've got, and we might line up for, a, uh, for an approach. And in the meantime, what I want to do is talk to you about the avionics in this airplane, because uh, got her back this last month after a flyer down to Mobile, put her in the avionics shop, got a new... Uh, GPS here, tell you a little bit about that, tell you a bit about the decision making and the cost of it, in case you're interested, um, and pros and cons and where things seem to be right now. We will start by doing our run-up. All right, nobody on final. Michael and his student are clear. We have recording going on here. All new lights out here at Raymond. New LEDs, kind of nice. All right, bring her around to 30 on the runway. 30 is coming around the DG. 30 is coming around the compass. Fuel pressure's good, oil pressure's good. Put our feet on the floor. And go. Our speed's alive, got a little right rudder in. Oil pressure's good. All temperature's good. 60 knots. And we can rotate. And we'll go out at 70. center line. Nice smooth day. Got fields off to our left if we need them. And we can turn that. Rape traffic, 4447 echoes above 30, uh, turning out to the north Raymond traffic. So we can configure this thing, turn the fuel pump off, turn the mixture down a little bit. I gotta say, under 1700. We come out here over the uh, tire plant, continental tire plant here. We'll do a 360. Tower Tomahawk 4447 Echo is 10 miles to the west inbound. Uh, protection goes. Tomahawk 4447 Echo, Hawkins Tower, went 3605 altimeter, 299 or 4 report. Two mile final runway 29 or. Report a two mile final for runway 29 or for 4447 Echo. Guard 718, landing will be your own rescue caution. Landing's not being used, Guard 718. Tower 972 near one, request high hover 400 and below. Tower 972 approved. Dog Tower, Tower 1. Okay, 1 Tower. Yes, ma'am, with you about 8 to the west, 1500 uh, inbound UMC. I got the 6 wing, get my 1 inside. Air 1, Hawkins 13605, altimeter 299 or 5. Correction, 299 or 4, transition approved. 299 or 4, transition approved, Care 1. Tomahawk 47 Echo, there's a helicopter uh, in your vicinity. He has you in sight and we'll, we'll maintain visual. All right, I have traffic in sight for 47 Echo. And you want me to write downwind, correct? Tomahawk 47 Echo, from this there. Right downwind for runway 29er. All right, right downwind runway 29er for 47 Echo. And 
Range on Mach 47 Echo. If you'd prefer left downwind, that's approved. I do have a couple of UH 60s on the uh, south side of my airfield maneuvering, uh, but I don't have any other traffic as far as in my traffic pattern. It looks like a left downwind is a little more straight in for me for uh, 47 Echo. Okay, Tom, uh, 47 Echo, then that's approved. Report midfield left downwind. We will report a left downwind, 47 Echo. Excuse caution one three six zero five. The Tomahawk traffic is now touching down. And then he's going to be on us. We'll remain south and west of runway two nine at all times for the touch and go traffic. Seven one eight. Go traffic is UH 60 off your left front, remaining south of the airfield. Make right close traffic. Right close traffic, 47 Echo. I got the tough gun sight. Come on, 47 Echo, Roger. Maintain visual separation from that traffic. Maintain visual for 47 Echo. In Hawkins Tower, I can see you're busy. I can uh, depart over to Madison if that was for you. 47 Echo. Come on, 47 Echo, your discretion, you're the only one in my pattern. I do have just the military helicopters. All right, let me do one more touch to go, and then I'll depart over to Madison. Come on, 47 Echo, Roger, runway 29 are clear for the option, wind 340 at 6. Clear for the option, runway 29, 47 Echo. Airport. I do have my brand new GPS 175 dialed up uh, to get me over to Mike Bravo Oscar. But this is a pretty easy visual too. They come up over the interstate here, up over Renaissance um, Shopping Mall. And back behind that, the Township, kind of a live work shopping mall thing. And then spin around here for the, um, you know, I probably could have done a, just a left base, but I just get in the pattern here.
GPS. What's the story behind that guy? So, I, you know, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to get this plane up to our nav capability. It was already uh, IFR certified. It's had all of its uh, inspections and everything, and it had these two radios here. And what I wanted to do is kind of as inexpensively as possible, I wanted to see if we could get uh, the GPS in here, right? So I shopped around, came to realize that, you know, I already have two good radios. It's got, one of them's got an ILS, one of them's got a standard uh, VOR, which could be used for a localizer. So um, I didn't really need to add radios. I do have a transponder and ADS-B out. Now it's all kind of old school, but it's there, it's working. So uh, I thought to myself, I can just get the GPS-175. All it is, is an IFR GPS, right? But it is the latest technology, it's touch screen, it's kind of got everything going on nice uh, that you'd want for something like that. So then, once I decided I was going to get this GPS, which is around $5,000, I said to myself, what is it going to take to install it? A lot of what you hear is that it takes, you know, twice as much as the cost of the radio to install it. So I was kind of getting ready for that possibility. And I uh, sent some emails out and uh, asked some folks to, uh, to go ahead and give me a, uh, a quote. I got one quote here from a guy in Mississippi who wanted $6,000 to install the GPS and to put in a uh, KI-209 that I was giving him. So 6000 bucks seems a little high. Um, so I got another quote. That's another guy here in Mississippi, and that shop wouldn't give me a quote. He said that, uh, you know, they have to see in the panel and that they have an hourly rate and that they'd be willing to do it for the hourly rate. So finally I found that these folks down in Mobile who would give me a quote, and the quote that came in for putting this GPS in the aircraft. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but what I initially thought was I'd put it over here and then I would just put its indicator over here, way over here on the left, which you may not even see out of that camera. So I thought, well, that's a good price. And then I started kind of asking around. I kind of knew already. I had sat in this aircraft a little bit, and I thought to myself, well, it's a little bit of a stretch for a GPS over here. But I was trying to do it as cheap as possible, try to keep those costs down. I asked around, asked on the Tomahawk Facebook group, you know, what do you all think? Everybody pretty much thought I should go ahead and move the stack around. So when I got down to Mobile, I talked to the guy, and uh, we sat in the airplane, or, you know, stood in the airplane or whatever, and looked at it and said, what would it cost, you know, to really do the whole enchilada? Let's do, let's put the GPS up top where it's supposed to be, move the transponder over here, it had been on the bottom, move both radios down, put the GPS's indicator here, put the ILS indicator here, and then move the VOR over to, to the left side here. How did he feel about all that stuff? And he felt like uh, they could get it done for another thousand bucks. So that took us up to uh, 3500 for the quote. And um, one thing led to another. We, I had taken it down there and rented a car to drive back to Mobi from Mobile. Hour, hour and a half flight down, three hours drive back. And then I went on a business trip, so I was out of town for a little while. While I'm on the trip, he tells me that they had put the GPS in, they were ready to go, they thought everything was going to be done in one week, and it uh, turns out that the GPS was bad. It's the AHAR is that's built into the GPS, which I never played with, uh, wouldn't come up. He said, we're going to have to send it back to Garmin. Do you want us to do that? I said, sure, do that. It took about two weeks to come back, and that was over Labor Day, so it took a little extra time for it to come back. When it did come back, they tried to install it, on the Thursday before I was supposed to drive down, this is, this is now going to be exactly three weeks, so I could return the rental car, you know, with five minutes to spare, <laughs> having rented it for three weeks instead of one week, uh, which is part of the expense, by the way, right? The, um, he said that the, the, the KI-209 wouldn't work, that it would indicate uh, glide slope, but it wouldn't indicate uh, left or right. Where else? Then I have to find another K, KI-209, and that was actually not as difficult as I thought it would be because it turned out that my a and had one on a shelf that they hadn't opened up in about 20 years. So I came back out to the airfield, picked that up in the rental car, took it down to Mobile, sat around for a while while they played with that, and they figured out that it wasn't working either. What they finally figure out is that it's actually the connector that they had crafted to connect the GPS to the KI-209, and that the first one that I brought them actually did work. So that was nice because the second one wasn't going to work. It actually had something wrong with the OBS knob. The 
Yes, sir. We'll get down to 1900. Down at 500 feet per minute. All right, so for our descent, we've got our landing light on, our fuel pump on, mixture full rich. Everything else is working very nicely except for one thing, and that is that this little dial down here is what gives me both ADSB, that's off ADSB, that's on ADSB, and panel lights. Well, don't seem to have any panel lights. Java Wayne Turner traffic 4447 echoes nine miles to the west of the airfield. We're practicing the uh, RNF for one two, but we're going to break off and the downwind runway three zero behind the uh, traffic coming in. Alex, sorry to get out of your way. No, no worries. It's a tomahawk. Uh, it'll take a little time. All right, so we're going to get here to uh, East Seal. We'll get there in two minutes. We need to maintain 1900. So, um, the rest of that story is that they ended up, it ended up costing me about $3,900 all said and done. They did have to charge me for some of the time that they spent troubleshooting the uh, GPS, the first GPS, and sending it back to Garmin. That went a little over budget. But everything else kind of worked out pretty nice. So, all said and done, we're talking about $9,000 plus about $800 to rent a car. So I had you know, factor that in. If there was some other way I could have done it locally, which there isn't, there's no room. And John Bell, William Garvey, 712 Mike Delta's left downwind, 30 John Bell. If there had been some way to do that, then I could have, but uh, you know, I didn't. So right at about 10,000 bucks. Now, what do I have? I've got an IFR platform. I've got something I think that we can train in. I can get the rest of my instrument rating done in it. I've actually done all of the hours of instrument training that I need, but I don't have enough training. <laughs> I haven't done enough, so we need to get some hood time. We need to get some actual time if we can. All right, so now we are above Glide Slope. We pull it down, come in. And John Bell, 712 Mike Delta, short final 30, John Bell. And John Bell Williams, 47 Echoes, five miles to the west of the airfield. We're on the R now for one, two. We're going to break off for the downwind for three. That's the story of the GPS. Um, I'm happy. I would like to get the, uh, the screw down in Mobile to fix the lights. We'll see if that works or not. I can convince them to do that. I know that it's going to be a little more cost for them than a uh, little uh, money that I don't want to spend. But um, overall, pretty happy with it. I'm glad, uh, you know, glad it didn't cost 12000 you know, it would have been nice to get it in a little more, but I do know that just the flight back from Mobile, much less what I've been doing today, um, to actually, you know, program in a, a, a procedure and, and come in, um, it is really nice to have the GPS right there. There's a whole lot of stuff that you can do with it. You can hit the clock and the timer and all that kind of thing. So um, it's really nice to have. Let's fly the airplane dot. All right, 1,700. Come down to our flaps. First, not to flaps. 